The scene is America, a place of opportunity and challenge. The agency consists of American values flowing from the scene, values including inclusiveness, universality, progress, and empowerment. These values, in turn, define the agency of the hero, the agent who is not a great leader standing larger than life, but an ordinary person made great by the values he or she shares with other Americans. In other words, the romance is the story of ordinary Americans seeking the American dream. As the first Southern president since the Civil War, Johnson was ideally placed for trying to heal the rifts between North and South. He'd got Kennedy's civil rights bill onto the statute book before the election, and he now announced his own version of the American dream, the Great Society. The Great Society rests on abundance and liberty for all. It demands an end to poverty and racial injustice to which we're totally committed in our time. In 1964, President Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act. Regarding the act, Johnson stated, We believe that all men have certain unalienable rights, yet many Americans do not enjoy those rights. We believe that all men are entitled to the blessings of liberty, yet millions are being deprived of those blessings, not because of their own failures, but because of the color of their skin. Johnson, along with many other politicians, have used the narrative of equality underneath the American dream, which leads to the question, why do presidents invoke the American dream to begin with? Mary Stuckey explains that presidents must unite contemporaneous occasions with appropriate traditions and innovations so that enough of us will continue to see ourselves, and sometimes even our better selves, reflected in the national mirror of public discourse. <laughs> This country needs a new administration with a renewed dedication to the dream of an America, an administration that will give that dream new life and make America great again. The immigrants who came to Chicago, the poor in our inner cities, the middle classes struggling to make ends meet, these Americans still believe in the American dream. They still yearn for prosperity and still sacrifice so that their children will enjoy it. They mark progress by the level of education reached by members of their families. Parents who never finished high school send their children to college. Each generation stands upon the shoulders of the one before as our nation and our people reach for the stars. We must keep those dreams alive. While Reagan's rhetoric garnered intense support from the American public, the reality is that his policies did not, in fact, make the American dream possible for all citizens of the United States. Rather, racial divides and gaps in society became worse and have continued to worsen until today. In 2008, Barack Obama came into office inheriting a dire financial crisis. Once we deal with the immediate crisis in housing and strengthen the regulatory system governing our financial markets, we have to make government responsive once again to all of the American people. And our final task, in fact, is to make sure that opportunity is available to all Americans. You know, the bedrock of our economic success is the American dream. It's a dream shared in big cities and small towns across races, regions, and religions, that if you work hard, you can support a family, that if you get sick, there will be health care that you can afford, that you can retire, that you can retire with the dignity and security and respect that you've earned, that your children can get a good education and young people can go to college even if they don't come from a wealthy family. That's our common hope. I want to make sure that in America, it doesn't matter what you look like, where you come from, who you love, you should be able to make it when you try. You should be able to make it. Presidents from Johnson to Obama have invoked the American Dream narrative throughout history, so it serves to ask, who has achieved the American We admire men and women who make something of themselves, as the saying goes. Like Ben Franklin, the iconic self-made man. Franklin was the son of a candle maker. Through hard work and ingenuity, he got an education, he made money, and became an influential author, inventor, and statesman. 
In an article for the Huffington Post, Neil Jensen asks whether or not the American dream is still alive. He answers this question by giving his readers several examples of people who are considered to have achieved the dream. The first is Howard Schultz, CEO of Starbucks. Second is Andrew Carnegie, a businessman who immigrated from Scotland. Third, the famous clothing designer Ralph Lauren. Fourth, John Paul DeJoria, the creator of Paul Mitchell hair products. And lastly, Colonel Harlan Sanders, the founder of the fast food chain KFC. While all of these men started from nothing and built impressive wealth through hard work, achieving the American dream, there is something else that they all share, along with the aforementioned Benjamin Franklin, that they are all white males. The reality is that the American dream narrative is still invoked by presidents and presidential candidates today, and that it still problematically ignores large populations of the country. This neglect is problematic because it can lead to the perpetuation of racial inequalities. In an article by Susie Kim, Matria Wilson, the advocacy director at the National Community Reinvestment Coalition, addresses this inequality. Home ownership has been the mechanism by which the U.S. has created a middle class. The ownership for white Americans is more than 70%. Then, all of a sudden, when you start talking about it being expanded to working class Americans or communities of color, we say it's not all that it's cracked up to be. We're talking about not letting brown people have access to wealth. The rhetoric of the American dream is dangerous. The racial gaps in the United States continue to worsen. Recent studies show that as of 2016, it would take African American families on average 228 years to amass the same wealth that white families have today, given the current rate of growth. So how are politicians today addressing this issue? I say, and it's fairly standard because I believe it strongly, the American dream is dead, but I'm going to make it bigger and stronger and better than ever before, right? Right? The American dream, as a reality, is one that has excluded anyone who is not white from equality in wealth, income, and housing. The American dream narrative is one that unites American citizens under the guise of unity and opportunity. It is time for politicians to stop invoking the American dream without acknowledging the real equality issues that we have in this country. Good words and intentions can often produce negative results. The American public must also be aware and stay aware of this reality if we truly hope to pursue a future in which all Americans can be assured that they have an equal chance at life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness.